The American dream is very personal to me. My father served in the South Vietnamese army, and my uncle was executed by the communists during the fall of Saigon. When the war ended, my family was to be placed in a concentration camp. We always dreamed of a better life, maybe even coming to America someday. Our dreams came true a few months later when a church sponsored us to come to America. We were very poor when we came here. Members, today I recognize in memories of the millions of the Vietnamese and thousands of the Vietnam, hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese refugees who die in seeking for freedom and democracy. Senator Wynn, Sen sergeants, please remove Senator Wynn from the chamber. Have her removed immediately. Sit, stand. Sergeants, please remove Senator Wynn. She is out of order. I am proud to be able to serve my country. That has given me and my family so many opportunities. I'll never stop believing in America and the American dream. You know, there's Democrats in Sacramento. They just have a knack of messing everything up. And there's one that they're working hard to get rid of. So, Senator Nguyen cannot be here because she had to go to a mandatory meeting of the Republican caucus. So, what we're going to do in about 45 minutes is Skype with her. So she is going to be on Skype, and we've had so much fun figuring this out. Our speaker this evening understands what America means when it comes to freedom and a chance to live your life the way you want to. Her family's struggle and success is the personification of the American story. Senator Nguyen and her family arrived in California in 1981 after a hazardous escape from Vietnam. The family struggled financially, but through hard work and focusing on educational opportunities, they saved enough money and eventually moved to Orange County. Senator Nguyen's love for the United States compelled her to pursue a career in public service. She is the first Vietnamese American in the country to be elected to a state's legislative Senate House and is currently the highest ranking Vietnamese American elected official in the state of California. We look forward to her telling her story and sharing information about what is going on in Sacramento in the state legislature. been in discussion all day, actually all week, regarding sexual harassment allegation against a sitting Democratic Senator, where we are looking at potential expulsion, suspension, censor, etc. tomorrow morning on the Senate floor at 9 o'clock. Uh, tonight, uh, we were um, called for an emergency Republican caucus meeting. Uh, so that we, and we were asked to all attend. Um, I will have to tell you, since I've been here and elected in 2014, I don't remember a time where we had an emergency Republican caucus meeting. 
Um, therefore, that's the reason why I'm not able to leave the building today to um, be with you. I um, first, though, um, want to thank everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join you tonight. It is especially great to be here, to be able to speak to you, to celebrate with you the legacy of Abraham Lincoln, a man who changed the course of American history and who I personally admire for his belief in our great nation. Lincoln once said that democracy is a government of the people, by the people, for a concept which is reflected in the Sonoma County GOP um, theme, which says that government is run by those who show up. In that spirit, you have dedicated time and resources to voter registration, outreach, and education. You clearly understand that when Republicans turn out in great numbers, we win. Um, I'm not sure, was my, I think my video was, was shown. Uh, and as you just saw in the video, the principle of freedom and democracy are very important to me and my family. It was a search for freedom and democracy that compelled my family to escape from Vietnam in the 70s. After living in several refugee camps, we were fortunate to find refuge in the United States and with the opportunities that were previously non-existent. After much hard work and dedication, my family and I proudly achieved the American dream. Coming here as a refugee, I spoke no English. My family was on social programs, welfare, food stamps. I worked starting at 10, cleaning houses with my families and friends so I could get some money to pay for my school clothes, my school supplies. My American dream consists of giving back to the nation that gave myself and my family so much. That is why I am part of the path of public service, college, and I never look back. Over the past decade, I've been proud to count the support, count the support of my constituent, whose confidence has allowed me to serve on the Board of City Council, the Orange County Board of Supervisors, and today on the House of Senate. I ran for the 34th Senate in 2014. We were ready to keep the Democratic Party holding a two-thirds majority voting group in the Senate. And because of this, I became the number one target for Democrats state. We were outspent three to one and facing an lengthy smear campaign. But there's one thing I tell her. Going back to my first city council race, I've always been outspent, out indoors, and out but I've never been out. Every day I was on the ground, walking, meeting with residents, and making calls. Despite running the district, I had a plus four Democratic registration advantage. Despite being outfed freedom, and despite the native advertising for months before we were even able to have the funding to play, we were victorious in November 2014, beating my Democratic opponent by 17 percent. We were successful in holding off the Democratic supermajority and for the 2015-2016 legislative session, we successfully held the line against tax increases and threats to Prop 13. Without the supermajority, we were able with, we were able to force Democrats to bring Republicans to the negotiating table on a key piece of the legislation. I went to the Senate with a target on my back. And as you saw in the video, my time here has not been without an incident. My experience has extremely sh was sh extremely shocking because as you also saw in the video, my family came to this country in search of freedom and I truly believe in freedom of speech. On February 23rd of last year, I experienced firsthand what it means to have my rights violated. I was removed from the floor of the California State Senate by Democratic leadership for trying to set the record straight about Tom Eaton and his support of the Thomas 
North Mideast Governor Jim did it. And I did it after they memorialized him in a full memorial ceremony for Tom Haiti on the Senate floor. I walked out because I did not have to part to put his family through those respect. I love the Senate floor and decided I will make my comments in another day. I'll respect to the man that I completely disagree, but I'll respect to his family and his Sadly, my efforts were made, were met with quick disapproval. My microphone was immediately shut down, and I was forcibly removed by Senate sergeants. I'll tell you a little bit. So my speech originally was going to be in English and then in Vietnamese. On the Senate floor, I switched from that, I went to Vietnamese first and then to English. Because I realized, if you shut down my mic, but they won't shut down if they don't know what I was saying. <laughs> In Vietnamese, they had no clue until I said Hayden. And then when I got to the English part, the first sentence, after the first sentence, my mic was shut down. Because they knew what I was going to say. This experience was extremely shocking because I truly believe in freedom of speech. And I never expected to witness, much less be involved in the silencing of a sitting senator on the floor of the California State Senate. If there's one place we need to protect freedom of speech. It has to be in the house of the people. If we can't protect it in the house of the people, where can it protect in California? The days following this incident were very difficult for me, my family. But through it all, I was very encouraged by the outpouring support of veterans, community members, and United Stations like the support I received throughout the experience is very important to me, and I thank you for standing by me. In the face of the past I've went from Democrats, I've weathered the challenges and I've stood firm with the promises I made to the residents of the 34th Senate. Since taking office, I've received a 97% conservative rating by the American Conservative Union, an A rating from the Power Jobbers Taxpayers Association, a 100% rating from Caltech and an eighth rating from Cal Chamber of Commerce. These, these ratings represent my commitment to protecting residents from policies that overburden our economy and which impact the day to day needs of our families and businesses. In my efforts to protect families, I stood up for Cal students pursuing a college degree by calling for a CAP, Cal State Students Internet for Uses, UC system. Why are we not allowing our own children to go to one of the best universities, but yet let outside students to go? It is a shame that the great state of California struggles to make California students who are not only eligible, but who have worked hard into one of our stellar state universities. Additionally, I fought for our students by seeking to impose tuition caps that would keep the price of college more free. According to an audit release in March of 2016, the UC system was cited with lack of prioritizing California students and found that other options for generating safety and revenues were ignored and with two military bases located in my district, I have been an advocate for the care about veterans and military family. As a member of the military family myself, my uncle was an officer in the in it, my father also served. My uncle was executed days before the Saigon fell. My brother, a proud United States Marine, served and was sent to Iraq after September 11. So as you can see, I championed this cause with a sincere heart. I know that our service members and their family have sacrificed a great deal for the sole reason of defending our family. For this reason, this past legislative report, it put from the veterans package to address the mental and health care needs of our veterans and to acknowledge the great sacrifices made by the men and women in our nation's armed forces. I am proud to share that after advocating for these bills in both colleges of the question. 
one of my bills, SB 410, will sign into law, a bill that will help service members with precision disability in life. As I witnessed firsthand, after my brother left the Marines, he was homeless. I was a sitting county supervisor who, has, who had access to county veterans service but did not know that her brother was sleeping in his car every night. That was devastating deep down now. So I'm committed to making sure that our service members can transition into the civilian life that they deserve in their life. I've served in the State Center for almost four years, a responsibility that we pay for. As I see how Sacramento really works under the majority party, since the Democrats successfully retook the two thirds swing majority of both houses, the state legislator, in 2016, we have faced some serious setbacks. With a complete control of the legislature, the Democrats are free to silence our voice at the negotiation table and act their agenda. And in my experience in the Senate from February of this last year, is any indication they will resort to any necessary to achieve their end goal. In this legislative pact, this session, the majority party proposed and passed more taxes. I'm sorry, I also have a cold. <laughs> In this legislative session, they propose and pass more taxes and free than we have seen in any recent memory. We all saw as they passed a new gas and vehicle tax, <coughs> which has increased the price of a gallon of gasoline. Thanks to this tax, California now has to pay $5.2 billion a year in taxes, stemming from a policy that has no sense of date at all. <coughs> that wasn't enough. In July of 2017, the governor signed a new cap and trade that would cause our gas prices to raise by as much as 73 cents per gallon on top of the gas and vehicle tax. By 2031. That may not sound like a lot at first, but for a family just getting by and struggling to pay rent, 73 cents per gallon can represent a significant portion of a family's income. Despite their success in bringing these taxes, Democrats agree with their supermajority status by a razor thin margin, and we'll be looking to safeguard the majority income by targeting my seat in 2018. They also want to tax and put in place single pay, which will cost at minimum $400 billion annually, doubling our current state budget. That could potentially mean at minimum 50% payroll deduction, direct deduction for the age of In the 2014 election, my district had a plus 4% Democratic registration advantage. Today, the Democratic registration advantage stands at a plus 10%. My district has met Barack Obama, Jerry Brown, Janet Lynn, and Hillary Clinton. Of all, even in November of 2014, Jerry Brown was on the ballot with me. He received 53% of the vote in my district, and I received 58% in my district. There is no doubt my re-election will once again be one of the most targeted races in the state of California. As of today, I have three Democratic opponents, and I fully expect the Democrats to wage a vicious campaign against me. In 2014, 
They spent over five million dollars to try to defeat me. They threw every attack in the book at me. I like to tell people they threw the kitchen sink, the toilet, and everything inside of the room. <laughs> And I expect nothing different this year. <coughs> As the ele our election in 14, at the time, was the most expensive state, actually state legislative in the state's history. As the 2018 election cycles nears, I will be taking nothing. I've never been given anything in my entire life. As mentioned, I've worked at events, I've raised for now. I know that I need to work hard and that I cannot win this race. To win a race like this, I would need the help of the message like yours, our state of California, and the United States. That understand the value of the past. I believe that the logo GOP chapters play a very important role in 2018. Your incredible volunteers and advocates from across the state of California can help us turn back the Democrats' grip on our state. I look forward to working with you in 2018, and we need your help. There are three races in California in the state Senate that are two of us are incumbent Republicans who should have never won because they're well over the margin air for Democratic advantage. When I first ran on a city council, I was told there's too many Asians, they don't need anything. I was told, this is 2004, 2004. I was told, Janet, I like you, you're great, I know you. Here's $200, why don't you go get married after the kids? And I won. Came first place. I also made history. I was the first woman of my in 35 years. I was the first Asian American woman. I was the youngest elected at the age of 28. Two years later, I ran for the Orange County Board of Supervisors. I was told, you run this, Janet. I will make sure you lose, and once you do, I will. And this gentleman was a multi-millionaire, a big power broker in Orange County. I will write a blank check to make sure that you lose your reelection. And by the way, you should probably move wherever your husband came from. For those who don't know, my husband's last name is Bonikowski. Oh, yeah. He's from Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. um, I ran. I won. Election night, I won by 52 votes. Oh. The next day, after Provision of ballots came in, I lost by seven. I asked for recount the following week, I won by seven. <laughs> I was sued to court. The judge deemed at the end of the election, if you went to the court documents, I won by three votes. Yes, one, two, three. Wow. But if you go to the register of voters website, it will say that I won my son. So I've never taken anything for granted. And that this was plus 12% Democratic advantage. My Senate seat was lost to the Democrats in Orange County 16 years ago. We're able to take it. So I asked. Your help. I ask you to join us on the Republican Senate Caucus. Help us win back 
super majority of them. And again, I apologize for not being able to be there with you. I would have been. There's just circumstances right now of what's going on with the whole Me Too movement. Um, a lot of members are being investigated. Um, and so there is potential, you're going to hear it most likely tomorrow, whether we do expel, don't expel, or suspend a sitting member of the state senate. It has been an honor and a privilege to be able to speak with you tonight. Thank you very much.